Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament here broadcast on Azubu TV. My name is Reed Rapid Melton, joining me is Seth Achilles King for our final initial best of three of the night. We'll have three more games to decide the last player to advance, but before we get to those, we've got to find out who is the Solo King between Ambition, jungler for CJ Entis. He'll be going up against OQ, a guy that I actually predicted to win this entire tournament. Not that I don't have enough faith in Ganked by Mom. Played it a little bit close in that last series, but OQ has just been a monster. None of his series have been remotely close, specifically his last one versus Bengi. Didn't show any mercy in that one. So I'm excited to see how he fares here against Ambition. Yeah, if you take down Bengi, then uh, it's going to be difficult. We'll have to see what happens. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, the uh, final best of three of our initial set. It's Ambition versus OQ. Ambition, of course, playing Caitlyn. How that got through picks and bans, I don't know, but there's Chuds with his signature <laughs> rocket jump flash. Starting off the game with a bang. Now, a uh, different build here for OQ, and he's done this in several versus 80 carry matchups, where he'll still start with some sustain, but buys a cloth armor. We'll see if he does this Zepha strategy. Now, if you guys didn't, if you had missed the uh, the games that Zepha played earlier on in the tournament, unfortunately, he didn't make it through here to the round of six. But what he does is he walks all the way around between the wall and uh, the enemy turret. And then once the enemy later walks up into the creep wave to CS, just walks forward and just hits them over and over and over again with double ups. And they just lose the, uh, lose the trade after that. We'll see what he goes for. He's currently back in base buying some items. Yeah, I'm interested interested to see how this uh, build is going to pay off for him. Like you said, we've seen him use it consistently. And I mean, it's been doing him wonders, but he is going up against Ambition, who is a fantastic player and a force to be reckoned with. He's also, uh, for Ambition's side, opting to go for the Crystalline Flask. Doesn't want to go with the Doran's Blade, so he's he's he is scared of OQ's damage. And wants to have as much sustain as possible. We'll have to see if OQ is able to utilize those double ups to the fullest of their ability. And if he can do that, that should make up for his lack of an aggressive item. So you can see he's playing forward, gets the first auto attack. And that's kind of strange against Caitlyn, whose auto yeah. attack range is somewhat higher. So we'll have to check out the AD or the attack damage differences. Ambition starting with 68 attack damage. Wanted to hit that headshot onto OQ, but uh, see what this double up damage looks like. Uh, I haven't exactly checked the full AD score here for OQ to see what he's running with. Yeah, waiting for that one to pop over. So far, so good, though. Dodges out the first Pilt over Peacemaker. Already doing better than uh, most other people that go up <laughs> into this matchup between uh, against the Caitlyn. So as long as he can keep doing that. Oh, and he already feels all right. All right, I think I'm like a couple seconds ahead, so now I get to be the future. But uh, does land a double up there onto Ambition, so nice to see those starting to land. It's a good way to trade through the creep wave, and there's nobody else to block it like, you know, a support champion. It's another double up. Gets those impure shots on, but won't be in range to do anything with them. Yeah, taking a good amount of damage, both of these guys. CS still pretty much dead even, though. So this, I get the feeling, is going to end uh, with a cataclysmic battle between OQ and Ambition. Maybe once we hit those level 6 marks, we'll see each of them popping out the ultimates. They do have to be careful if Ambition starts charging the ace in the hole, unless it's going to get the kill. OQ could start channeling his as well, and that is just... You know, a full couple seconds that he will have to channel onto Ambition, and uh, he can put out a lot of damage in the in that time. So let's see what happens when we get to that point. If we get to that point, because these guys are playing hyper aggressive. Yeah, and like you said, CS actually a very even between 80 carries, and it should whoa walking up on him. OQ gonna get in range. Trades out those impure shots, and you can already see Ambition having a little bit of trouble with that. More importantly, impure shots on Ambition are really going to cut down his healing, because he's pretty much going to have that Crystalline Flask running for the majority of, uh, well, until it runs out, I suppose. 
Yeah, so he's out of that now, and Oki's potion actually finished out. So both of them pretty even, but Ambition still has those health potions as well. So he's going to be winning the sustained war unless... Oh, double up through the minion wave. That is actually a wow. pretty long range. Uh, always uh, The reason I can't play this sports shoot is I always underestimate the double up distance, like how mm. wide you can bend it on its uh, targeting reticle and how far it's going to go afterwards. But not so for Oki, just continuing to land one after another through the minion wave. Yeah, he's doing a good job of utilizing those. As you can see now, Ambition chugging his last potion. That one has expired now. So, both of them are going to be out of sustain. Oki going to be very reliant on that cloth armor to help keep him in here. But yeah, so far, still even 34-34. All right, so when it comes down to it, double up's gonna hit ambition there and takes another impure shot. All sustained gone for both of these carries. That pretty much means that we're not going to see anybody. Uh, I wouldn't expect any deaths here because both AD carries realized they're kind of low. Probably would opt to go back to base instead of playing as too riskily. And it looks like that is exactly what OQ is gonna do. Get spotted out by this scrying orb. Actually, would have been in range for that Peacemaker, so good thing that he backed out a little bit further for the recall. It's going to give Ambition some time, though, to shove this wave in, but here comes the TP. Might miss... Ooh, Oki actually didn't no. miss any CS off of that, so... Throws out a scrying orb of his own. Okay, he missed one. Ah, oh, so missed one. That was a little careless, but... Hit every other one, and he comes back to lane with double Doran's Blades... Sustained from potions and a, ch a chain or uh, cloth armor, and this is really where that cloth armor start is going to start to hurt him because it pretty much means that he'll be behind a Doran's item at every point in the game. Will mm -hmm. that cloth armor? I, I guess theoretically, because it's percentage damage reduction from stacking up armor, the more AD ambition buys, the more effective that cloth armor will be. This is very true. He's also going to be down in HP in general because he just doesn't have that Doran's Blade. So it kind of goes, it goes both ways. It, it you know, kind of equivalates to an extent. But we'll have to see what's, ha what's going to happen here. Ambition not really opting to go in with the headshots for Harass. You know, more just using them to maintain his CS. Pretty much dead even still between these two, which is something that we haven't really seen today. There's always been a bit of a discrepancy. These guys are pretty much on the dot with each other. Yeah, 2 CS lead for Ambition really doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, walking forward with that double up. And keep in mind, Ooh. double up and those autos are going to apply uh, the uh, the impure shots. So it's going to cut down on maybe a little bit of healing. But at this point, Ambition's starting to get enough healing from those triple Doran's blades. And you can just keep auto attacking and really use minions as mini... Uh, health battery is getting all that lifesteal, but walking up on him, OQ is going to get a lot of those impure shots down. There's the ultimate, trades it back and gets a nice extra double up off of it as well. But once again, walking right into the Piltover Peacemaker and an ace in the hole. Yeah, so they're both going to be have to uh, you know, be chugging their potions at this point. They want to get their HP back up as quickly as possible now. Oh, look at those double Ooh. ups. That is dangerous. Yeah, OQ really manipulating his positioning and just making sure that those double ups are going to land. He's really only missed a few. Majority definitely have been landing onto Ambition, so very good job by OQ thus far. One thing he does have to be cautious of, though, is that Ambition still does have the barrier. So if OQ wants to play forward again and get hyper aggressive, he does have to deal with that barrier. But as we can see so far, it's not having too much of a hard time mm -hmm. harassing out. A big difference between both of these AD carries and the previous 1v1 that we saw. Um, mm. A lot of times versus Caitlyn, you want to take barrier because it's good at dealing with ace in the holes. Or aces in the hole, rather. But it's uh, it's not something that OQ has gone with. I'm not sure exactly why he would bring flash on this fortune. Maybe it's so they can flash into range, into close range, and get rid of that you know, range advantage that Ambition does have there. Because uh, Ambition won't be able to flash away if he wants to go for it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it... OQ flash into a point-blank ultimate. Uh, that's what I was that... about to say. That might be what he's intending, because that'll make it that much harder for Ambition to get out. I guess unless he runs through him. Depends on where... He, it depends on his positioning. He can't stand on top of him and cast it. 
um, because the frontal cone won't be wide enough hmm. to keep him in at the entire time. But if he keeps him at, at sort of a mid range, like half uh, half an auto attack range, he should be able to keep him in the ultimate for almost the entire channel, unless Ambition can 90 caliber net to the side very quickly. I think Ambition's finally figured out exactly where he needs to be. Whoa, a lot of damage from that ult coming out, but I don't know if that was the best usage of his mana. He got a little bit of damage down, but now he is almost out of mana, but Ambition almost out of health. Yeah, really working him down. That heal reduction coming through, really just uh, doing work for OQ completely. It's just absolutely decimating Ambition. We're probably going to see... You know, the second backs here, we do have the teleport up for OQ. So you can see Ambition maybe gonna finish that channel. See, I almost feel like this is the situation you wanna save your uh, your ultimate for. Use that mm -hmm. bullet time to just nuke the wave and head back to base. So that you can Deny get him back the CS. There. Yeah, and push the wave in your favor. And it, I mean, OQ was able to uh, kill it, I guess, quickly enough. We'll be going back to base. And uh, good thing for Misfortune is you don't even have to uh, bring a teleport if you don't want to, just because you can run back to lane really quickly. Of course, it's always better to have that summoner spell to get back in here. But, oh, look at Ambition. Comes back to lane with a Vampiric Scepter. This is where things get dangerous, because keep in mind, Ambition is now over 100 CS. And OQ is not yet coming back into lane. Just uh, a few more, two more minions, and Ambition would be able to get that lead. But it looks like he's going to get in in time. To hit up some of these minions. And he should get perfect CS here underneath the turret. Uh, turret mm. down to a little bit above at half HP too. So could see uh, maybe an alternate win condition come in here. But yeah, like you mentioned, now actually only two CS separating both of these players. And see if any more gets denied here as Caitlyn actually has to walk all the way back to lane instead of using that teleport. Yeah, yet again, a perfectly good time to be able to use bullet time, but just doesn't have it. Ambition actually did that because he had enough damage or enough gold for a Bilgewater Cutlass. It's a little hmm. bit interesting. Uh, not often that you see that ace in the hole comes out. It actually does not deal all that much damage. That cloth armor really hmm. showing how effective it can be. Yeah, and those double ups showing how effective they are because ripping through chunks of ambition but i think we might see this one end at cs stalemate unless they can really keep up their farming like they're doing such a good job of this should uh pretty much equivalent to cs here if he gets these minions but it looks like they might want to go aggressive trap comes down oh, doesn't land beautiful double up there yeah takes him down to half hp he is going to be chugging these potions still has five health potions that he can use Plus that bilge water, so he's going to be in a pretty good spot as far as sustaining himself. This double up spam is getting really annoying for Ambition. And now, oh, walking forward. Nice 90 caliber net. He has the ulti. Oak, you still walking forward. You can see he was thinking about it, but took a lot of damage walking back off of those uh, auto attacks. So, Ambition, now both the AD carries dead even on CS. This is going to be a nightmare to get that little bit of an advantage and might actually motivate them to, while keeping up in CS, go for an alternate win condition like uh, killing a turret. Or each other. Or each Which other. Comes out. Well, the Pilt over Peacemaker doesn't land, but as you can see, OQ taking a bit of damage. <laughs> but look at the lifesteal that Ambition yeah. has. There's no way that he's ever going to die unless OQ keeps on the pressure. But unfortunately, OQ won't be able to do that because he has less overall auto attack range. And I think Ambition might just have this one if it goes on long enough. Well, Ambition's running really low on mana. He's going to have enough for Piltover Peacemaker soon. If he doesn't have it already, I can't entirely... He's, okay, he's got it now. So if he can play to that advantage, sustain himself... If Oku can, consist, can sustain himself with the Vampire Acceptor and his health potions and then lay in damage through his abilities, then he should be okay. Uh, Oku but is this losing. is looking dangerous. He's, yeah, he's actually, Oku just queued up three health potions in a row. So he wants to try to go for this, but does he have enough time to keep that sustain coming in? Because Ambition is actually denying him CS and it's trading out very well when he tries to come up and kill minions. Yeah, the bullet time's still there, but he's just not in a position to get lethal damage onto Ambition. This is looking very bad 
Oh, and there's actually the uh, Flash Force down. Ace in the hole comes out. It's first blood for Ambition. Yeah, I made a desperate play. Tried to get the bullet time out to get some damage in, but it wasn't able to do enough, as we'll see in the replay coming up. All right. Uh, yeah, got to get the replay in here. Actually, uh, dead even on gold, too. Both 80 carries. There's a 10 gold difference between Ambition and OQ. And... Well, there we go. Uh, not quite the replay we were looking for, but <laughs> Ambition <laughs> does take game number one versus Okiu. All right, so we'll have to see what Okiu is able to do coming back into this one. He said he was your pick to make it through and become the Solar Damn King. It. <laughs> but so far... Not looking good a, for our heroes. Yeah, having a bit of a rough time. I'm sure that that means that we're going to be seeing Caitlyn going right back onto the ban list. Or maybe OQ will want to try to pick up Caitlyn for himself. Also, do want to mention that uh, the guy on the right uh, just did get confirmation from our uh, our mod live on the scene, Chudnator. Says that, that is, in fact, Reaper. I knew it looked like him, but I wanted to make sure. It's nice to see Reaper kind of making a comeback, at least to the commentator desk here for the <laughs> Solo King. Uh, doing a little bit of guest casting as well. Let me do welcome him. And it's an... I'm going to pretend that we're casting alongside him right now. Is what I'm going to do. <laughs> we're all in the same room. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just off to the side just a little bit. Yeah, they cut us out of the shot, but it's okay. We forgive them. <laughs> Let's All right, see. well, that's uh, that's going to do it for game number two, which means game three should be our game number one. Game two should be coming up here. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I'm Getting back to... into the future. You gotta stay stay in the present now. I'm trying to pretend like Oki has won a game yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be seeing uh, game two come up here in just a second. Miss Fortune uh, had some some good double up her ass, but just could not cut through the incredible sustain that Caitlyn had. It was a game of inches there towards the end as far as uh, CS was concerned, but never really uh, the kill potential that Oki wanted his Miss Fortune to have. Yeah, and I mean, I suppose it... it, it does beg the question would it have played out differently had he not gone for the cloth start maybe if he had done uh, you know more of an aggressive start with a doran's blade or if he could have played it a bit differently as far as the sustain game goes with a crystalline flask but we will not know unless we get the same exact matchup anyway. <laughs> maybe it goes to blind pick and they just do a rematch <laughs> All right, well, uh, should be getting game number two up here on your screen in just a second. It looks like it, both players were added to the lobby, and uh, we should have that up here. I want to see if uh, if OQ fixes his room, or it wasn't OQ, it was um, it was Ambition that had, mm. or was it OQ? I think it was OQ that had a point in Dangerous game last game. So I want to see if they, they change that up for the runes and masteries, but here we go. It's game number two on the way first band cassiopeia versus ambition okay so fairly unsurprising we've seen her banned out a bit and even picked a couple times uh very strong in those 1v1s lots of range range harass especially with those dots from her poisons and she's very good on mana efficiency Callista gonna be the second band coming out here though so not terribly surprising OQ taking his time with the second one, however, clock down to below 10 seconds. <laughs> All right, well, last... Really not sure what he wants to do here. I mean, Caitlyn is always a good band, no matter where mm. you are. I mean, even if you have first pick potential, like OQ does have this time, you might still just want to ban it so that he doesn't have to, uh, you know, worry about it being up. So this last ban for Ambition should be that Caitlyn, unless OQ decides to aggressively ban it. But in response, uh, OQ, at this point, he knows that he's either going to get Caitlyn or he can ban something that would do well against Caitlyn. I uh, currently haven't seen too many things that do do well against Caitlyn, but should be a last ban Caitlyn for Ambition. We did see Varus have a decent showing in that first match uh, earlier with GBM. But yeah, actually, Nunu taken away, which I think has been close to 100% ban right today. Close to it, but... I think uh, there was maybe one round or so. Maybe one or two where it didn't Yeah, I, I think the real reason that Nunu was so popular is because the players in the, those specific matches are had won just games with Nunu. Are just gods at it. <laughs> yeah. 
So they had won games with Nunu before, so it makes a little bit of sense. And whoa, Ambition giving the Kaelin over to Oki. No hesitation. Any Maokai. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about the Maokai pick. Um, uh, yeah, that one's really intriguing to we, me. We've only seen one Maokai in the Solo King, and I believe it did lose its matchup. So now looking for what Ambition is going to go to. You can expect an AD carry pick here. And with Lucian banned, uh, Graves is up. And that would be, a, I guess, a decent pick, but the range advantage is still there for OQ. So not sure yeah. exactly what he wants to go for. Yeah, it's a really risky play if you go Graves. You do have Brunt Power behind you, and also as long as you can stay in combat, you'll have that additional armor to help you mitigate the auto attack harass that you're going to be receiving from Caitlyn. But you have to play so far forward as Graves to really get your damage out, so it'd be really risky for him to do that. Uh, Ezreal wouldn't be too bad of a choice, but looks like we might have the Graves. All right, well, here we go. Uh, Graves versus Kaelin matchup. Ambition, uh, this time he's facing the champion that well, he just picked, so not banning. I, I don't know in what world Maokai is a better pick, or is a better ban than Kaelin is. So a little bit questionable there on the ban list, but uh, as far as AD carries go, two of the best picked up here. Maybe Lucian, maybe a slightly better pick than Graves. Uh, at least we've seen that do very well in the Soul King as well. So now we get a chance to see whether or not they've uh, they've amended their rune pages here because actually ganked my mom said when he uh in his second game to come back from his initial loss versus tucson uh he actually said in his interview that he didn't have good yasuo runes but one of his uh, one of his teammates was pestering him to play yasuo he said play yasuo so he did play yasuo even though he didn't have the greatest rune page for it and i think that's what it we were talking about as far as like the confusion about cdr runes in the page it was mm -hmm. i guess okay but, uh, I mean, he made it work, and now we get to see if Ambition can make Graves work against OQ's Caitlyn. If I had to, like, I mean, keep in mind, OQ is one of the star AD carries in Korea at the moment. So, it's not like you can expect any one of his AD carries to be, uh, be any less than amazing. So, on the best AD carry in the tournament, it'll be interesting to see how he does. Yeah, I'm going to have to side with you on this one going into the match. I think OQ has the upper hand, but we'll have to see what they're rocking here in the rune pages. Hmm, trying to see uh, exactly what the differences are. I believe that is um, 4.5. Okay, so it's attack speed and AD in quintessences, and then a little bit of extra AD from, uh, from reds there as well as attack speed. Uh, if you look at the runes and masteries, or masteries at least, uh, yeah, good mastery choices here. Two points in Warlord. Maybe not the most cost-effective, but probably more so than anything else. Yeah, overall, nothing too shocking in here. Good for the mana sustain. All right, so swapping things over, there's 4.5%... Is that lifesteal? I want to say that's lifesteal. That looks like it. And now we get to see uh, the mastery page that actually no points in uh, in utility for that three points in mana regen, which uh, I mean we've seen pretty common as far as uh, you know things like Caitlyn, like a lot of AD carries that want to spam their spells on, on the wave to get the shove advantage early. And I just get to see the th full three points in Warlord being picked up there at the very end by, uh, by Ambition. So that was um, not something I've ever seen before. I've, I don't think I've seen three points in Warlord yet, uh, but it does mean that he is going to get as much bonus AD as possible as he does go to stack that up. Yeah, I mean, uh, the more AD, the better, especially when you're playing on a, a you know, a character like that Caitlyn. So, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I think that this could be uh, one of the more hype games of the day. It's because... We do have the Graves playing from behind, really, just in raw well, matchup he's, stats. He's playing from behind in stats, but as far as the score goes, uh, actually ahead 1-0 versus OQ. So Ambition out AD carrying the AD carry. Apparently, well, we'll uh, have to see if that's able to, uh, if he's able to maintain that. Or if we're going to go to another blind pick game, mm -hmm. which... Is always great, always interesting to see. And you know when we're gonna see that, Achilles? When? I was 
gonna say right now, but it looks like we're gonna take a little <laughs> bit longer to, uh, to load in the game. Make sure to hit the follow button right down below the screen. Check out our uh, charity of choice, Extra Life, down there as well, if you feel so inclined to donate. And of course, stick around, because when we come back, it'll be a game that may possibly decide Oku's fate in the Solo King. We'll see if he has here in just a second. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid. Joining me is, uh, I was about to say Ambition because I was reading his name off the screen. You are not Ambition. Somewhat worse at League of Legends, Achilleos. At least I hope you're worse at League of Legends. If you're better at than, uh, than Ambition, then you better get over to Korea. Yeah, I've been making some really poor life decisions as far as <laughs> like, my Why are you not a pro path. gamer yet? Because I just enjoy casting that much more, alright? You know? That's just the way it is. No, I am indeed worse than ambition. I think I think a lot of people in that same category. So uh <laughs> wouldn't worry about that. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't feel too bad about it. <laughs> sneaky strats from OQ. He uh bought a scrying orb and immediately used it on the summoning platform. It reminds me of those good old days back in like season one, season two, where you'd uh, you'd start the game with clairvoyance, clairvoyance yeah. and then clairvoyance the enemy's starting platform to see either which lane they were going to or what their opening item buys were. He's kind of doing the same the same thing, bringing back those old school strats here in season five. A little throwback to that, as we can see, we are going to have double crystalline flask starts. Ambition waiting around a bit longer, wants to uh, get a little bit of that extra gold for them as the wave comes out. And yeah, no more cloth armor starts. I, uh, yeah. I don't know, I was not a big fan of that. It was an interesting idea because Oki realized he was going to have to get up into melee range to make up that range advantage, disadvantage that he had on Misfortune versus Caitlyn. But at the same time, he just wasn't able to get that, uh, finally enough gold for a, uh, what was that, a Bilgewater Cutlass that... Yeah. Ambition finished the game with just really, really effective by. Yeah, any any damage that he was uh, mitigating was just made up for by the amount of damage that Ambition was able to put out in a quick amount of time. As you can see, Buckshot already coming out, ripping off a good chunk, but he takes a headshot for it. So they trade a little bit, even go back to CSing. And so this is all made possible by OQ actually being in lane before Ambition. OQ. Mm -hmm. Went without that 150 uh, extra HP from getting an extra potion. Stayed in lane, got the push advantage, but Ambition actually stayed in base and got an extra potion to come back in here. But this will give the level advantage to OQ. See if he can make up that potion disadvantage. Yeah, and he's going to need that extra potion. As we can see, Ambition already taking a heck of a lot of damage and harass from OQ. But he fires back. He's getting these buckshots just on the edge. Um, but still doing a decent amount of uh, damage to OQ. You can see losing some CS, though, under tower. That would actually would have put him ahead. He lost two right there. Now he's down by one. Dodging built over Peacemakers, though, so that's uh, always the, a good sign. And hitting with Buckshots, too. So kind of the yeah. same situation where you're looking for, uh, you know, which spammable AD carry Q gets the most value here. Should be yeah. Caitlyn's. But... It, it's absolutely going to be Caitlyn's unless Ambition can play more forward, but until until he gets some more items, until he gets something you know really aggressive, he's not going to be able to do that, because if he gets up in the face of OQ, he's just going to get poked right back out. As you can see, he's already dangerously low. A headshot with a Peacemaker could actually do him in, but it's not going to land. Oh, if that tilt over Peacemaker had been saved, OQ might have been able to pick up a kill there. Off of that Caitlyn trick, and it's going to send Ambition back to base way ahead of schedule. He's only level 3 with 18 CS, and he's already headed back to base. Yeah, that is going to be pretty crippling. Looks like OQ might go ahead back alongside him. TP will be burned. This might enable him to catch up a little bit. He's only down by 3 CS. Nothing too significant there, but 
So you can see he has been getting bullied out. They come back in. Doran's blade each. But several more potions on the side of OQ, and they trade back and forth. He's in the smoke bomb, but Ambition Whoa. being just ripped down. He takes the turret shot. This could be the series right here. Does he have the Night of Gale Burnett? No, he doesn't. Pilt over Peacemaker doesn't come across. The barrier pop, nonetheless, from Ambition. And that's going to have to be another back unless he wants to just sit here. This. Get denied minions and just rely on his potions to regen him. Well, this is not what you're looking for. Ambition trapped underneath his turret. And... I don't know, man. This is not a situation he's going to want to be in. He does have, like we said, that potion advantage, so he's got slightly more sustain. But that's a terrible position to be in because now walking forward, he's going to force out that barrier. Ambition walking, running for the hills, running for the brushes. He's trying. He's on the run. Can he get this executed? He needs built over a peacemaker. It snipes him down. And it's <laughs> Ambition. Winning game oh. number one, but losing this game number two to OQ's Kaelin. Yeah, we can see, like, he tried to play forward here, but OQ realized that he had the advantage. He's just has the damage. He's able to poke him out. Graves doesn't really hit a power spike in lane, really, until you get a BF sword or a pickaxe. Those, you want to be your first buys. That's where you really get your power. But in the 1v1, you're really not going to be able to do that, especially for a first buy. So OQ, with the just r increased range, able to poke him down and take a game away so that's gonna mean that we're moving into my favorite thing which is that blind pick third round between these two players so i think it'll be fairly unsurprising if we see a double caitlin game coming out in this next matchup yeah I, I don't expect that we'll see anything else and while that could lead to some pretty boring just afk farm simulator 2015 um i, I definitely think that both of these teams both of these players have something in common maybe we'll see another one of those blind pick lee sin versus lee sin games always a big fan of those yeah we haven't but, seen any oddball choices today really that's true it's always been uh, you know very very meta picks yeah lots nothing, of ACs. Too out of the ordinary I guess the Annie and the Lulu were like the two that were a little bit that differentiated from the uh, the rest. Otherwise, we've just seen a lot of ADC action today. Actually, I guess the strangest thing that we've seen today was that Maokai ban. Just now from Ambition. I still don't understand that. Yeah, the, the Maokai ban that allowed OQ to get Caitlyn... Uh... Still somewhat questionable. Wound up losing to the champion he let through the ban phase, so you can't yeah. uh, can't argue with that. And and so when it comes to when it comes to blind pick, we're gonna find out who the better AD carry is, which is a weird question to ask when Okiu is involved. He's been putting up big numbers. Uh, remember the very very first game uh, Washington play versus uh, SK Telecom uh, T1. I think that was the first game of champions this season. He put up huge numbers, and it was versus Faker. So, well, I mean, versus uh, Faker's team, it was versus Bang mm -hmm. Lane, but you get the idea. Some picks, here we are. No hover from Ambition yet. Garen hover from OQ. That would be... Hmm. That would be one of the oddball ones. That Something tells me fun. this is not Ooh. going to get locked in. But Ambition locking in a Cassiopeia. Now, that's actually really interesting because he's shying away from the AD carries that we've seen be so prevalent. But I mean, as Okiu, he's shown that he's an incredible AD carry over and over again. Does he go with the Caitlyn pick? Locking in Azir here would be absolutely terrible. Azir having mm. been uh, nerfed pretty significantly. Down to like a 30 to 40 win percent ratio in solo queue. Probably not the best champion to bring in here. Although, you know, in the 1v1, things things do change. Yeah, but against the Cassiopeia, Emperor's Divide not going to net you too much unless you can knock him into your tower. But Ambition's not nearly that careless. So not surprising that we won't see that one coming in. As we can see, oh, it looks like OQ is going to hover the ADCs. And we're going to go ahead and fall on... The Misfortune. Alright, <laughs> Misfortune. OQ loves this champion in the 1v1s. He picked it game one and lost with it. And so I am initially <laughs> skeptical. And I think the reason he's picking Misfortune here is because he's predicting that it's going to be a versus AD carry matchup. So he's saying, alright, I'm going to pick Misfortune instead of Caitlyn. To sort of mind game it against the Caitlyn pick. 
maybe sort of a rematch of game number one, but it's not what he's going to get. He is uh, kind of on the ropes here. Yeah, going in against the Cass. I... As far as this matchup goes, I, I don't know. How do you feel about this? I feel like it really could honestly go either way. I feel like it's a bit more reliant on OQ to land the double ups, and if he can't do that, then Ambitions Cassiopeia is kind of going to take the cake. I think Cassiopeia is uh, maybe with a slight advantage, has a lot of mana sustained in lane uh, off of Aspect of the Serpent, the way that Twin Fangs refunds mana when you kill a poisoned minion. Uh, Twin Fangs range is 700, so you'd have that's longer than even Caitlyn's range would be. So if you get poisoned, Ambition should be able to kite OQ effectively. We'll see whether or not his micro is up to par. Um, OQ did first ban Ambition's Cassiopeia in the last uh, last game, so it's a pick he knows he's worried about. So for OQ, uh, it does look like he's actually using 1.5% lifesteal here. So it has one lifesteal rune, and then a couple of... AD runes afterwards, so he's definitely looking for that double up value. And once again, three points in Warlord, so as much AD as possible. Maybe look for that late game pickaxe buy. And if you can get to that point, we didn't quite get there in the last matchup, so we'll see if he's able to farm up enough and stay in here long enough to get that buy. This, uh, I feel like this game could either go on for a very long time or it's going to end very, very quickly with the harass from Cassiopeia in that level 3 to 5 range. Alright, now for uh, for Ambitions or Arn Arnvisions rune page, uh, fairly standard. Mastery page, 4 points in cooldown reduction. Um, usually you see at least some attack speed in there just to make CSing a little bit... Uh, easier, but fairly standard. Uh, once again, no dangerous game picked up there, and six points in defense, three points in utility. Also fairly standard there as well. All right. Well, nothing too shocking. We'll have to see if they're able to shock us with their play. Ass versus misfortune, going to be one heck of a matchup, and of course, this is going to determine which of these guys is going to go into the losers bracket. All right, Which yeah, this is uh, double elimination semi-round robin. We'll get a chance to see who advances. Is it OQ? Is it Ambition? Make sure to uh, leave your prediction in chat if you're watching, and uh, we'll check those out. Let's go ahead and get into our final matchup, the best of three. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid. My uh, cohort in casting crime is uh, Achilleos, and we're getting into our last game of this best of three series between Ambition. Now that I see, now that I've uh, I've seen how Ambition spells his name in game, I can't stop thinking of him as Arnbition. Arnbition, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anymore. Uh, there's actually a guy in North American solo queue named uh, named Timo. But it's not actually Timo, it's Tyrno, because he does the same thing with the R and the N completing it. Ah, uh, clever. Very clever. But uh, <laughs> it's Misfortune versus Cassiopeia, and I don't think this is quite such a great matchup for OQ. Talked about that range advantage for Cassiopeia on twist on uh, the uh, the Twin Fangs. 700 range on that ability. Yeah. So uh, if OQ gets poisoned, it is going to be a, uh, a rough spot. But uh, Cassiopeia did just get nerfed a little bit. Twin Fangs now cost, I think, 90 mana at max rank, so... That is going to be a uh, pretty difficult thing to avoid. Yeah, we'll have to see how this one goes. I'm really interested. I'm trying to figure out how I think this one's going to end. Whether it'll be by kill or by farm. I feel like it's going to be a first blood game. The best, the round threes usually are. You get the, uh, Red in the eyes, because you realize you're on the verge of getting knocked into the loser's bracket. 
Now, earlier on in the uh, the tournament, I believe it was actually one of uh, one of Bengi's games that he played. Uh, he played a game against, uh, I think it was Peanut's Cassiopeia, Peanut the uh, Najin sub. But uh, mm -hmm. he he played a game versus Peanut, and Peanut played Cassiopeia. Bengi wound up winning that series, but in a very very uh, clutch bit of micro. Came down to avoiding Cassiopeia's ultimate, and Bengi was still able to deal damage while walking sideways to avoid the uh, the Cassiopeia ultimate. Really, really difficult to do, and he uh, he managed to pull it off. So that's gonna definitely be something to keep an eye on once both these players hit level six, avoiding that Cassiopeia ultimate, which is almost certainly going to result in uh, a pretty bad time. Now, one disadvantage that Cassiopeia will have is sustain. Because OQ is going to pick that up from not only the flash start, but probably from the Doran's blades that he will inevitably buy. And it'll be interesting to see if CJ Arnbition can <laughs> make it uh, make it up, play aggressively enough to both keep the CS coming his way under turret. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm not quite sure how that one's going to go for him. He's already been chugging some potions and. Some of his uh, crystalline flask charges. The double ups have been doing work. OQ utilizing them quite well. I believe he's only really missed one on Ambition, who has otherwise been miss missing uh, a good amount of these noxious blasts. And right as you say that, he gets one. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Caster curse. Sorry. <laughs> it's a little bit back and forth, um, but that is kind of the uh, the meta. It's do you uh, do you hit your noxious blasts and go in for damage, or you know do you go for. Uh, a more aggressive way of playing and uh, just go for the the Twin Fangs without poisoning the guy. Uh, twin Fangs do t cost a lot of mana, so when you want to chain them back to back, you need a ton of mana to do it. And that's why recommended items for Cassiopeia usually include either um, you know, a Tear of the Goddess into Archangels or Rod of Ages, but not going to be able to afford either one of those. If Ambition comes back to lane with a Tear of the Goddess, <laughs> I am going to laugh and laugh, but instead probably just going to see Doran's ring. Yeah, it'd be very surprising if we saw that one. I feel like a Chalice would even be a bit more likely than the Tier of the Goddess. As we can see, though, OQ playing forward, trying to leave some damage into Ambition, but he fires back and takes him down to about half HP. Currently has a little bit of mana advantage, especially when he gets those refunds off the Twin Fang. But as we can see, OQ a bit ahead. Each going to get these minions here, but it's going to put him five up over top of Ambition so far. Okay, so the biggest thing to watch out for is probably going to be CS. Uh, CS thinks something that 80 carries do better than almost any other role. And versus Cassiopeia here, uh, you can see Ambition starting to struggle a little bit. He's down about 6 or 7 CS here already at 4 and a half minutes. But is continuing to land those poisons on to OQ. He was continuing, uh, continuing to land those double shots, which is making all the difference for him. He still has... A couple potions, looks like. This ambition only has the one double shot, doesn't land. Nice noxious blast. Takes OQ down to about 50%. It's going to force him to chug yet again. Oh, but that double shot. That double shot. Continuing to dish out the harass. And, uh, you know, ambition does have enough potions to sustain through quite a bit more of that. He's keeping himself relatively healthy. He uh, hasn't hit that 100 stacks on his. Um, I always forget that what that's uh, that's called his uh, aspect, aspect of, the of the serpent. Yeah. Once he does hit 100 stacks, he'll actually get a little bit of HP back whenever he uses Twin Fangs. So that could definitely be a source of sustain that helps make up the difference from not actually being able to buy lifesteal items like Oki can. Yeah, and that's also going to be one of the big reasons why why we will almost certainly see him pick up the Doran's rings instead of any other item because that'll directly impact how much HP he's getting back. I believe it's about. 10% of your AP, I forget. And then uh, yeah, you get a, like plus it's, six HP. Yeah, it's a, it's a 0. 0.10 uh, or 0. 0.1 AP ratio. So mm. you don't get all that much scaling off of it, but it uh, starts out with six HP back. So you're gonna get about 10 HP back every single time you cast a Twin Bang. Yeah, it's a decent uh, refund. It's also gonna increase his ability power by 5% uh, when he gets that increase. Actually, bull time coming out will clear out the way for OQ and stop Ambition's back. It's a nice double shot there. And now, uh, actually, OQ getting some good damage in on the tower. Ambition just trying to clear out the wave as best as he can with these Noxious Blasts and the Twin Fangs. 
Uh, but Tower gonna be just above 50% HP here for OQ, so oh, very nice push. Yeah, Ambition's ability to CS under a turret there is actually really impressive. Uh, able to get almost all of that CS, but does still find himself about 10 CS behind, and it's not that he's be uh, he's able to go back to base, it's that OQ actually let him go back to base. Mm -hmm. Uh, and is gonna come back from base himself. Not okay. I thought he's actually just gonna run all the way back, but he will use that teleport. Coming back to lane with triple Doran's blades and a longsword. Yeah, but immediately, Doran's immediately he's just getting ripped into. Wow. Ambition. A nice number of twin fangs coming out. Holy cow! That was. O Oq did not expect that much aggression off of just landing one noxious blast. Yeah, that was insane. He actually doubled up. He actually he doubled up and got two noxious blasts off in between and that allowed him to keep channeling uh the twin fangs on that 0.5 second cooldown really good aggression coming in from ambition says you know what i have some ap now i'm going to hurt you now no points put into actually no just one point put into miasma for ambition so if he really really wants to land those twin fangs might go for miasma instead of noxious blast uh, does cost a little bit more mana. Actually, it does not. He has only 40 mana. And uh, as, as maxed out as Twin Fangs are, that's going to be the real mana drain for him right now. Yeah, but luckily he does have that ins oh, borderline insane amount of uh, refund that he gets off of those when he kills a minion that's poisoned. So it's going to be able to keep his mana up. As we can see, he's now full mana. Eats a little bit of that bullet time, but not too much coming out. Doesn't even clear the wave. OQ fires back a little bit. Oh, nice dodge there. Yeah. This is both Miasma and Noxious Blast. And trades back with a double up. So OQ, why is he going back to base now? I think he wants a uh, wants a Vampiric Scepter. And he recognizes that he's shoved the wave, so it's a good opportunity. Yeah, there's the Vamp Scepter. And he should be able to walk back into lane before Ambition can shove the wave back to his turret. Yeah, the strut passive is going to do wonders for him in that regard, so it's certainly going to help him get back. Uh, so that's that's another reason why Misfortune is a you know an excellent pick for these one v ones. I mean, depending on your matchup, uh, because she can get back into lane isn't entirely dependent on the teleport. Nice double up will take a good chunk off of ambition, and uh, yeah, that vamp scepter pickup is going to start doing wonders for OQ. But actually, here we go. Nice trade back. Oh my Ultimate goodness. does and, not come across. And OQ might actually just die here. Forced to flash behind the turret. Ambition had flashed for another Twin Fangs. He might have been able to pick up the kill. But wow, OQ just walks back in the lane and takes so much damage from Ambition every single time. Yeah, this is going to be very difficult for him. He's already chugging Crystalline Flash Charges. Going to follow those up with some potions mm -hmm. as soon as that one falls. But gonna make him make it difficult for him to even get in and cs these minions get or get these minions and i think that make it rage complete. just put all of those minions out of cs range for him mm -hmm. so wow that was uh really difficult and look at the cs difference it's actually now in ambition's favor after putting on so much aggression Damn, oq just really can't get into range yeah wow these twin fangs absolutely just ripping through me fires back takes a good chunk off of ambition Ooh, turret shot on ambition though yeah. Really turned it back around. And now it's actually Oki who might just have the sustained advantage after coming back with that Vampire Acceptor. Ambition has hit post 100 stacks, so he does have the ability to gain health off of using Twin Fangs. A little bit of sustain in both parts. The big thing to watch for here is that also OQ does have bullet time available. And if he can pin Ambition into a corner and cast it, It'll be very difficult for him to get out. It'll force his flash for sure. He's getting dangerously low, but so is that turret. If he can shove the wave, if Ambition backs, the teleport is not quite up yet. He delays it. The TP is going to be up, but this could give him the amount of time that he needs to get some real damage in on the tower and maybe win. Alright, so Ambition is going to be forced to use this opportunity to uh, practice his under turret CS mechanics. Misses a Twin Fangs. Is trying to get that damage down. Ambition does have all up in two oh. seconds. That double up. Oh my god. That is... That's kind of wow. close. Sub 40 CS there. Ambition taking a ride on the wild side. But we'll make it out alive. Yeah, does have that... teleport too for both players. So they'll be able to get back in lane. Wait, what? That's Catalyst the Protector. At this point in the matchup, that's really... Uh... 
I mean, honestly, what else are you going to buy? Uh, Catalyst cost 1,200 gold, so he could have actually gone for something along the lines of, like, a Hextech Revolver. Or a Blasting um, Wand for just some flat AP. Yeah, that Blasting Wand idea is actually not a bad option. Just getting so much AP that if you ever land poison on Oku, he's just dead. Yeah, I mean, we see how much damage he just put into him with a few Twin Fangs and an Oxious Blast. If he had a Blasting Wand on top of that, he actually could have had close to lethal. Probably would have taken him down quite low, but now as we can see, Ambition just needs five more CS, four more CS. He's going to be able to get these two. But Oki's going to be able to fire back and CS underneath of his tower. This will help him get back in a bit. But he might just force some minions, and he does! Oh my god, we were going to see the two, two minions, one more CS, and he's going to get it! A one, wait, did he get that? Yeah, one, yeah he, that was a 100 CS advantage, yeah. He casts the Petrifying Gaze to finish off the minions. Let's see if we'll get a replay of that, but... Yeah, that cast was... Petrifying Gaze just to get the last minions in, hit 108 as OQ is at 98. 